What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about the difference between certain types of heating sources. So we're going to go through wood burning stoves, propane stoves, oil and gravity fed stoves, and then the last one electric stoves. And in this video we're going to focus on small heating spaces. So either ice shacks, cottages, or even uh, if you're a van lifer. So if this video helps, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I throw out some new videos. Maybe Pratt & Whitney will sponsor me one day. All right, so let's talk about the first type of heating source, which is wood. Now wood is very cheap uh, to operate because you can find wood pretty much for free. So the big advantage is you have a nice heating source which dehumidifies the air. It throws out a lot of heat and it is very accessible. Now the downside of wood uh, heat is that it takes up a lot of space. So you have to either buy your wood in cords, which is how they measure the delivery of wood. And it could get quite dirty. So every time you burn wood, you'll get ashes. Uh, you'll get a lot of smoke maybe if it's not tuned up right. So it could be a very dirty operation. And especially for van lifers, if you have a wood fired stove, it takes up a lot of room. You need to install the chimney. And typically those stoves are very small. So you need to chop up the wood very finely and probably carry a bucket of wood with you wherever you go. Uh, one thing I like to do when I had my ice hut is to sleep in it overnight, which was an awesome experience. But the downside of wood, however, is that you have to wake up in the middle of the night and feed the fire. Uh, so that's one thing I didn't like. You're always worried about, you know, if, if, if the fire is gonna go out and then you have to reheat it. There's a lot of maintenance to it. So wood, wood burning stoves are a great option if you have a larger cottage with a forest and stuff like that. But if you're on the ice, like an ice hut or in a van, I would not recommend the wood burning stoves because it's messy and you have to haul a lot of wood back and forth. So another disadvantage of wood fired stoves is it might take you more effort to get the fire started. And if you don't find dry wood, you could be in a pickle. So you do need to make sure you have dry wood and you can't really regulate the heat well. If you have a window, you can open it that way if it's cold outside, but it's hard to regulate the heat because once your wood is burning, you can't take that wood out. So obviously you'll burn yourself, right? So uh, that's another downside of it. It is the coziest, in my opinion, when you hear the uh, wood crackling. And if you have a window and you see the flame, there's nothing more relaxing than that, in my opinion. So if you're going for comfort and looks and the feel of dry heat, then go for the wood burning stove. And if you have a lot of free wood, wood is awesome. The next ones we're gonna talk about is propane fired stoves. <clears throat> so this one here is very popular for the smaller ice huts. So those tarp looking ones and for van lifers because you can pick up a Mr. Buddy. There, there's what it looks like. Literally hook up a propane tank to it and fire it up. So it's great for small spaces. Um, and they're pretty safe because if you knock them over, they're gonna automatically stop, things like that. So they are a great option and they're very portable. If you have a propane heater, make sure you have a well-ventilated area because the flame does produce uh, moisture in the air and it could pretty much suck out the, uh, the oxygen in the air. So make sure you have good ventilation and that, that you have a CO2 detector. Um, that's critical for these because if you do a quick uh, Google search, you'll see a lot of horror stories and uh, we don't want any more of those. So propane, um, it's very easy. It burns very clean. You could literally turn it on, control the heat, uh, very easy to operate. They don't produce any ash or uh, some of that gunk like oil stoves. You can regulate the heat like I was saying, but they are unsafe in the fact that if the gas doesn't all burn, uh, it could cause a lot of harm and even death if, you, if you're sleeping and you don't realize there's a leak because it is hard to, uh, to smell that gas. So that's one of the big dangers with propane. A lot of times in winter months uh, here in Quebec, 
they use them for the ice huts. However, if it gets really cold, sometimes the regulators can freeze if there's moisture in the line and it cause your stove to shut off. So that's one thing that kind of sucks when, it, when it's like minus 35 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold, but uh, usually there's no issues with those stoves. So great option, super easy to use. You can have the small Mr. Buddies or you can have the more fireplace looking ones. Uh, so it is a great option. One note with propane, it is different than natural gas. So don't get the two confused. Uh, in this video, we're just talking about the propane uh, tanks. Another disadvantage with propane is that if you have a delivery service uh, for a house, it's very possible. But if you're far in the woods or if you're on the ice with an ice shack, sometimes delivery is not possible. So you literally have to take your propane uh, tank with you, get it filled up and bring it back. So it's an extra hassle, but it's not that big of a deal. You can get a little barbecue sized one or a bigger 100 liter uh, tank if you want. So you do not want to store the tanks inside, make sure they're outside. Uh, same thing for van lifers. Uh, there are a few options here that uh, I'll link below, but put the tank on the outside because you do need to have them ventilated at least. Um, so that's a big thing to note. So for the electrical heaters, for small spaces, I would say they're not ideal because you either need a generator or you need to be hooked up to power. So if you're a van lifer, you can buy one of these suburban, they're, they're meant uh, for suburbans. So they, they do heat up the van, but you do have to be plugged in. You have to have your electrical system figured out and stuff. Um, the nice thing with electrical heat is that it throws off a dry heat. You could get some good BTUs with it as well. But for an ice shack or a cottage, unless you have a generator, um, I would say stay away from electric heat. It does, it does use a lot of uh, power, so it draws out a lot of energy. So that's why you don't see electrical heat if you're off the grid. Um, they're used a lot in homes where electricity is cheap, kilowatt hours cheap uh, in homes hooked up to the power grid. But other than that, I don't think it's the best option for small spaces or van lifers. All right, so before we talk about the diesel heaters, I just wanna make a quick note. Uh, there you have diesel and gasoline. They're both very different. Gasoline, as you note, when you go to gas stations, uh, everything's highly flammable. So obviously no smoking, things like that around a gas station. If you take a match and you throw it in some gasoline, everything's gonna ignite. So the fumes will ignite first and everything's gonna burn, which is very dangerous. The difference with diesel or heating oil is that if you take that same match and you throw it in a, uh, in a jerry can of oil, most likely it's gonna extinguish uh, the match. The reason for that is diesel needs a high temperature to ignite, so it needs to be in a vapor form. And that's why with oil stoves, sometimes it can be a little tricky to, to uh, ignite them. So people use starting gels or starting blocks, uh, things like that to get it going. Um, uh, not Varsol, but kerosene is, is also a good option to throw at the bottom of your oil stove uh, to get it going. So that's the big difference between diesel or heating oil and uh, gasoline. So for the diesel heaters, I would say in my opinion anyway, it is a great option for several uh, reasons. And one of them being is that they are highly efficient once they're tuned up and everything. They're actually one of the most efficient furnaces or heaters that you can purchase today still. The only thing you need if you have an ice shack or a cottage or something like that, even a van for van lifers, uh, you just need a reservoir uh, to put your diesel in. So what I did when I had my ice shack, I went to the gas station, took a jerry can full of diesel and put that in my tank in the ice shack. So I built like a little holding tank and it would last me 48 hours. So when I turn on the diesel heater, I wouldn't even have to worry about it once for 48 hours until I just top it up. So it would run all season, all winter for about one month and I would clean it maybe once or twice because I tuned it up pretty well. Diesel heaters give off a lot of heat, so that is a pro, but the con is that if you leave it unattended, which is what I did once with my ice shack, I went in the morning to heat it up before some clients uh, arrived, so about three hours before they arrived, and I just cranked that puppy all the way up. 
when they arrived, all the blinds were melted. My smoke detector was all warped because it was melted. So I don't know how hot it was in the ice shack. I had a little temperature gauge and it was up to 60 degrees Celsius and it maxed out. So maybe it was hotter than that, but. Okay, my battery died, so I had to go charge it. But another advantage of oil stoves is that the diesel is readily available. So whether you're in an ice, uh, ice shack, a cottage or a van, uh, you can go to the nearest gas station, pick up a jerry can, fill it up with diesel and continue heating your space. Some of the kits for van lifes, they actually sell um, conversion kits so that you can use the diesel that's already in your vehicle. So since you already have a diesel tank in your van, you can tap into that. So that is actually very neat. And some of these diesel heaters you can get for vans are actually very small and compact. Um, so here you can see one in an image, it's pretty small. Uh, you have few models, so some that have the uh, diesel tank integrated and some where you put the diesel tank somewhere else. As far as the ice shacks go, um, one of the disadvantage of diesel heaters is that it takes a while to adjust them. You can check out my other videos with the carburetors, how to adjust because sometimes it could be very frustrating if your chimney's not long enough or if your high and low flame aren't adjusted properly, you'll get a lot of soot, you won't get that nice blue flame and you won't get that efficient heat. But once they are adjusted, they burn very efficiently and put out a nice dry heat, very similar to wood, wood burning uh, stoves, which is quite nice. Another advantage of oil stoves is they're relatively safe. Unlike propane stoves, if you have a leak with an oil stove, it won't ignite. So even if there's oil leaking on the ground, something like that, it won't ignite like gas or propane and you don't really need a detector with it. It's always good practice to have carbon monoxide detectors in your small spaces. So I highly suggest them anyways, you know, always install one, you never know. But one drawback with oil stoves is once it does get really hot, it's really hard to uh, adjust them. So propane is probably the easiest stove to adjust, but you can still adjust them a little bit. So they are better than wood burning stoves because you do have a knob where you can adjust a little bit. So that is an advantage, but there's a big delay. Um, so make sure you take your time and you have patience with oil stoves. If you are looking for a diesel heater or a diesel stove for very small spaces, they do sell one, which I absolutely love. And it's my dream to own one of these if I have a van or a sailboat in the future. It's made by Dickinson. It's super small, super compact, and it actually works with diesel. So you can have uh, various shapes and sizes with diesel stoves. So that concludes the video. We talked about electric stoves, diesel stoves, uh, wood burning stoves and propane stoves. If you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit that bell sign so you get notified when I put out new videos. If you have ideas for any videos or if you have any comments, leave them below. And I'm gonna put as many products as I can in the description. Thank you very much, have a good evening. And for my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. And I'll see you in the next video.